It's a Mad Meccano twin build. Hi. If you want even more Meccano goodness, why don't you check out my Patreon channel? And please like and subscribe and leave a comment below. I post updates in the community section, not only for this week's Patreon build, but also for what I'm currently working on. Thank you, and back to the build. Hi, and welcome back. Well, I must admit that I never thought I'd get to video number 10. When I started this, there were a number of hurdles to overcome. Learning to film is not easy. On top of that, as a YouTuber, you have to learn every stage of the construction, as there's nobody else that does the roles for you. That does make it easier in some ways, as you get to make the decisions yourself and don't need to worry about other people. But I don't find script writing easy by any means. I've talked before about being dyslexic, and while it is a barrier to surmount, I also believe that it is a strength. After all, if I can write these scripts, it proves, if nothing else, that I'm not as stupid as I was told at school. And that's the problem in life, that a lot of us have to overcome. It is the internal bias that forces us to prejudge not only others, but ourselves. I can easily say to myself that I'm not able to complete the task. After all, I left school over 30 years ago with not one exam pass to my name. By modern standards, I failed everything. But by 18 I was running my first business. I have seen some of the worst places for people to be in in life and help them get free of that mental morass that tries to engulf you. I've learned so much because I wanted to learn it, not because I was told to. And while I value formal education, I also value self-taught knowledge more, the ability to expand as a human to build your character is vital. To push your boundaries of your own bias, to talk to people who you don't agree with and try to, try to see their side of the argument. I prefer to have difficult, stressful situations than the easy life, for we only grow by being under stress. I'm not sure what this crane is, apart from being called a mono tower crane. My research seemed to turn up a blank, with a mono tower crane referring to larger shipyard cranes, with the tower being the structure above the cap. To me this crane reminds me of the type of lifting gear you'd see in a small yard, where loading or unloading from trailers or wagons was needed. The lessons that this build teaches are about the construction of two separate cable drums. One for the operation of the hook and one for the action of the jib arm. It's also the first time that I can find it appearing in a manual. Meccano was very good after all at recycling its models over the years. With frequently new models only appearing after new technology appeared and in some cases quite a while after the new technology had made its appearance. With well, the 1960s and 70s, we're starting to see the movement away from traditional nuts and bolts engineering, and the start of the electronic engineering, which was something that traditionally Meccano struggles with. Don't get me wrong, Meccano did do an electronic set, well, three actually, with the first appearing in 1920. And oh boy, did you need to know your stuff for that set. I have the instruction manual for it, and it's definitely not bedtime reading. Well, not if you're like me and you prefer to see the dawn than midnight. I was not the greatest of dads in the middle of the night. I don't think I even fully woke up when changing nappies at 3am. The 1970s set is okay with only three models, but they do play with photo cells. My favourite is the 1966 electricity set. And I've pronounced that wrongly. I have a complete one sitting in my collection. 
with both some of the original coloured bulbs and the new LED ones. Those builds will be coming out at some point. What this build does do is give a very playable toy. The ability to load and unload from dinky lorries on, onto Hornby railway wagons is a great plus for the model. And as a child, that would have been great fun for me. As an adult, the next build in this video is so much more interesting from, from both the build point of view and the mechanical engineering perspective. And that's the attraction of Meccano. Its enjoyment comes from different angles the older you get. The tinkering as an adult is in many ways more enjoyable than the finished item to me now. And the road digger. There are builds that bring a smile to my face when they are finished and the road digger is one of them. The model of the workman is the same as that of the acrobat from the first build, albeit with a difference to the way, to the way it's attached to the base plate. The action of the jackhammer is controlled by two rising cams hidden under the base. The cams are constructed by fitting two fish plates onto the bush wheel. As the chisel of the jackhammer drops through the base plate onto the bush wheel, the fish plates will push it upwards, giving the action of the hammer. This technology was first invented in 1806 by Samuel Miller. Then there is a flourish of ideas and innovations over the next 50 years or so, until 1851 when Joseph W. Fowle from Philadelphia invents the first compressed air drill. Driven by the mining boom in America and the expansion of the railways the world over, the need of a safe and more economical method of drilling was needed as steam could not be used in all places, due to the lack of air or the risk of explosion. The need of an air compressor was the next big development. Mechanical air compressors had been around for 5,000 years. There had been a major break, breakthrough in the technology more than a century earlier by two British engineers, John Smeaton and John Wilkinson. But it's not until the 20th century that we see the equipment become smaller, more usable and safer. The expansion of mass personal transport fuelled by the requirement for compressed air in smaller workshops, with the internal combustion engine as well as electric motors giving the ability for affordable tools to be made. So what is it that makes this, in, this model enjoyable for me? Without a doubt it is the tinkering side of the model. Once it's made you have to adjust the fish plates to make them run smoothly. The position of the workman and the angle at which he holds the jackhammer are also essential. While, as a child, I would have wanted the model to operate straight from the get-go, as an adult, the tinkering is always fun. And that leads back to an earlier topic. The dyslexic in me. That part of my psychic that makes and fuels the preset bias. The, I can't do, therefore I am wrong. Therefore I am stupid, because others can do. And the phrase, I have failed, I am useless, springs to mind. Success in life is often judged not by our failures, but what we have failed at. I think this unbalances the value that we place on life. To have success, we have to have failure. For without one, you cannot have the other. You cannot be happy without knowing sadness, joy without grief. Calmness without anger, richness without poverty. If you don't experience both sides of the event, you are left without an ability to judge whether your living is good or bad. But you also have to be able to reason with yourself. If what you do always seems to fail, is that because you are looking only at what went wrong and not what went right? 
Are you at a point where the cognitive load that life pushes on you is so great that you can't process the, the events in front of you? I said in the tower crane build that my daughter is the reason why I didn't opt for a different life decision a few years ago. And that decision is to be here, on this planet. It's part of the reason behind this channel. It is an opportunity to challenge myself. To do something that I don't think I can do. It is a form of therapy within itself. As I care for my mother in her final years, I have had to all but close my business. The staff have gone, the contracts that gave me a better lifestyle, the nice car and the ability to pay for the luxuries of life are not there. The pain of watching my mother decline into what is not the final years that she had planned or wanted is huge. Against that I have to weigh the fact that I get to walk this stage of her life with her, compared to her being in a nursing home and visiting once a week or so. It is easy to only view that negative part as being a weakness. If the last 50 years has taught me anything, it is live in the now. What I mean by that is, enjoy where you are, still plan for the future, reflect on the past, but see the beauty of where you are now and the journey you have travelled so far. Because all too soon, today will be yesterday, last week, last month, a year ago, a decade ago. And if you haven't enjoyed the here and the now, what chance do you have to enjoy tomorrow? So, whatever you are doing, wherever you are in your life at this point, thank you for walking this bit with me for sharing in these videos. Because to be honest, when I sat down to start this project, I didn't think I could get to here. So question that preset bias. It has a habit of lying to you. Thank you.